It is a great honor to bring the breath of life, the word of God, the Zoe of God to us uh, this very beautiful morning. And I believe that whenever God wants to shift atmospheres, the very first thing that God does is to send his word. Now the word of God becomes absolutely very significant when the word of God becomes flesh, becomes evidence, becomes touchable, becomes something that we can hold all around us. And I believe that this morning that God has baked his words in the oven of the spirit and he's releasing it to our heart indelible words that will be written not just as ordinances in our hearts but ordinances in our destinies and I believe that these are the same words that God is going to use to scale up matters of the spirit and in this very moment the mediator of the new covenant is standing right in front of me having paid the form of sacrifice once and for all and he is here this morning to really offer himself speaking to his disciples he said what you are eating is my flesh and this morning we have come to eat of the flesh of the Lord and nobody eats his flesh and remains the same thank you for letting me into your homes and I would sincerely want to appreciate the life of the man of God that God has put over this assignment you are doing an amazing work I'm super proud of all that God has endured and endowed you with uh, to raise God's people to full maturity to the place where he has always willed that they be in and I want to say to Pastor God's time Pender I really appreciate you and I love you from the depth of my heart thank you for the amazing work that you are doing in the body of Christ and to your very beautiful wife uh, Pastor Joy Spender thank you for all the amazing works you are doing in Streams of Joy Houston and thank you for giving me the privilege to bring the word of God to God's people because I believe that when God is about to send forth his word, it just might be for one person and that one person is looking at me or watching me from wherever you're watching me from because something is about to change in your life. Wherever you are, would you lift up your right hand? If you can speak in the tongues of the angels, if you can speak in the Holy Ghost, open your mouth and begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. The situation of the world might spell uncertainty, but our case is different. Men might be scared, men might shudder, men might be full of so much scares, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Our Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all all the praise. Father, thank you, oh God, for another privilege, oh God, to bring ourselves under the very powerful words that you speak. For the Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-aged sword. Lord, we ask that the same very word will become flesh, oh God. Will become something relatable. Will become something that will quicken our inner man. Will become something that will be written upon the tables of our heart and our spirit oh God will become the energy that we need in this season to make profound things happen in our destinies in the name of Jesus amen and amen and people of God like I said while I was praying in a season of trepidation in a season of seeming anguish and confusion in a season where world powers are, are extremely um, um, uh, clueless about the next move to make uh, in a season where it looks like darkness looms over the world. In a season where the faith of most people are collapsing. In a season where people are having to question themselves again about God. The most important question now remains. God, do you have a plan around COVID-19? Is there something you want us to know? But one thing I know is that the devil devil meant it for evil but God is turning it around he's turning it around hallelujah but guess what God never manifested a man in the scriptures until he precipitates a crisis can I say it one more time God never shot forth a man until he created a crisis permit me to put it this way crisis becomes a platform for God to 
showcase a man and I believe that in the season where men are screaming things are collapsing jobs may be lost another man somewhere under the sound of my voice is declaring God is creating a way for me God is making more things happen when men shall say there is a casting down I will declare there is a lifting up but guess what it is only going to come out of my belly out of my belly will flow rivers of living waters now hear me as I say it this way the ability to make a change is not in my environment is in what I carry in my belly can I say one more time what will make the situation work for me or can I put it this way work against me is as a reason of what I carry in my belly remember I'm not talking about the rice I'm not talking about the noodles I'm talking about the power that you carry for the Lord is able to do according to the power that is at work within you so if your power is a small power he will do according to the small power if your power is a huge power he will do according to the power that you carry but please let's read the scripture that blessed me so thoroughly and I want to share with you. Uh, permit me to say I am not really preaching but I am going to be sharing my heart. I am going to be sharing my heart and that is Psalms chapter 91. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. The Bible says surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hallelujah. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. At this point, somebody say hallelujah. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. A thousand might be hit by COVID-19, a thousand might be under the symptoms of coronavirus. A thousand might be on ventilators in the hospital. A thousand might be in the ICU. But the Bible says also 10,000 may not have made it through the pathway of life and death. Their 10,000 may have been gripped by the powers of the grave. But the Bible says it will will not come nigh thee. Lift up your right hand and say, it will not come near me. How can I finish just reading the scripture without me having you to speak it into your life? Declare it one more time. Say, it will not come near me. Declare it one more time and say, it will not come near me. The Bible says, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou has made the Lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he had known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him hallelujah I will be with him in trouble hallelujah I will deliver him hallelujah and honor him with long life with 
will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a promise. What profundity that we have in this prophetic utterances from the scripture and it's all coming across to you in the season of so much uncertainty. But people of God, I've got so much to say about what God has said will never happen to us. But do you realize that the psalmist began in a very formidable way and he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, which means uh, that the main matter here in the scripture, which is what I'm going to spend the next few minutes on, uh, for as far as the promises are concerned, as far as your safety is concerned, as far as being spared from disaster is concerned, it's already your right in Christ Jesus, but then again, it did not begin uh, until it said, uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, uh, his chandelier, uh, which means uh, that those uh, who qualify um, uh, for the want of a better word to use, uh, uh, for those those who, uh, who are brought themselves to the secret place of the Most High, uh, are those uh, who are going to have the ripple effect uh, of what uh, we are reading about in the subsequent verses. Uh, lift up your right hand uh, you're going to repeat after me uh, say a uh, secret place uh, I want you to say one more time like you mean it uh, declare it again say secret place uh, I want you to say it for the third time uh, secret place uh, uh, someone is already asking uh, say Pastor Jerry would you please calm down a bit uh, and tell me about uh, the secret place uh, uh, if you do know uh, the structure of the temple if you do know uh, the architectural masterpiece uh, of the temple according to the instructions of God in the old covenant you will know that there is the outer court there is a holy place and there is the holy of holies otherwise known as the secret place let me say one more time there is the outer court and there is the inner court that is otherwise known as the holy place and there is the holy of holies and the psalmist prophetically speaking and says that it is only he that dwells in in the secret place. Uh, oh, this strikes my heart really hard. It's only he that dwells in the secret place uh, that can only abide uh, under the shadow of the Almighty. And then all of these things will begin to happen in the life of that person. Now, it becomes really very instructive that when you go to the book of Hebrews chapter 9, uh, that the Bible begins to explain better about the secret place. Uh, for the scripture says uh, that even Jesus himself uh, entered the secret place. Yes, 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 yes. The Bible said even Jesus himself entered the holy place. But this is what I love about how the book of Hebrews brings clarity to the secret place. Uh, the book of Hebrews said uh, that he entered into a secret place not made by hands, uh, not made by man, uh, not made by labor that he actually entered heaven. But the Bible called where he entered into holy place. The Bible called it secret place but it was not made by hand so for us in the new covenant the secret place is not a geographical location so the secret place is a journey into the depths of God remember he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high so he that journeys into the depths of God he that journeys into a deeper koinonia with God he that journeys into a deeper fellowship with God. The Bible says he is the only one that can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm afraid to say this. that When your fellowship with God begins to have a shipwreck. When you are too busy or too tired to study the word. Isn't it so interesting that we thought to ourselves uh, that when there is a lockdown, uh, when I have a little more time, uh, I will study my Bible the more. Uh, yes, that's what we thought. Uh, we actually thought uh, uh, the only reason why I'm not praying the way I should pray uh, is because I am very busy. Uh, does it not surprise you that even in the midst of the lockdown, uh, studying the word is still a challenge. Uh, 
hallelujah studying the word uh, uh, losing yourself to the place uh, where you are embracing divinity uh, in the place of a deep in koinonia is still a challenge but then again God is saying uh, I need men and women in this season uh, who will go beyond the outer court uh, and now listen to this uh, still in the same book of Hebrews uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews uh, after seeing that the veil uh, has been torn remember I'm talking about the secret place uh, it is important uh, whether the arrow will not smite thee is consequent on the secret place uh, uh, whether kill Aboshi and Abaha, a thousand will fall and ten thousand will fall uh, it is dependent on the secret place uh, can I tell you this uh, the Bible says uh, that Jesus entered into the secret place uh, and offered himself uh, the book of Hebrews 9 tells us that he offered himself uh, uh, which means uh, uh, that uh, for him to enter the secret place uh, he had to die uh, let me put it in other English uh, for him to enter the secret place uh, flesh had to give way no man can get into the place of depth with God when your flesh is still alive mm -mm. No man can get into a place. Uh, of a deep coin on here. You know, in a season like this, uh, when there is so much mystery surrounding the world, uh, in a season like this, uh, where people are confused, uh, what's going on? Uh, what is happening? Uh, I'm afraid to say, uh, heaven uh, is downloading uh, chapters of revelation to men and women of the secret place. Some people might be confused, but I bet you that men and women of the secret place are receiving line upon line, precept upon precept on what is happening. People of God, even to raise your children, you need a manual from the secret place. Even to get a dossier of what your business, of what your career should look like post COVID 19, when the situation has come and passed, it's going to reshape the world. It's going to reshape your career. I'm afraid to let you know. Uh, some people might be laid off uh, and some people will enter into better opportunities. Uh, but how would you know? How would you know uh, until you become a man and woman of the secret place? Uh, remember the Bible says uh, in order for Jesus to enter the most holy place uh, the Bible says he offered himself. Uh, remember the flesh had to die. He had to die to the things that he loved. The Bible says for the works of the flesh are made manifest whether you talk about anger whether you talk about bitterness whether you talk about envy whether you speak about jealousy whether you talk about fornication whether you speak about adultery whether you talk about lust whether you talk about all manner of evil they are the works of the flesh and God is saying to someone I want to take you through a depth where I will show you where ordinary men what ordinary men cannot see but guess what you must be bold, bold enough to speak like apostle Paul I I have been crucified with Christ. I need your flesh to die. I need your desires to die. I need the things that you love to die. I need your convenience to die. I need what you call pleasure to die. I still in the same book of Hebrews. He says, come boldly to the the throne of grace. Uh, I don't forget uh, that in the old covenant model of what the most holy place was supposed to be, uh, there was supposed to, supposed to be an ark of the covenant. Uh, and in the ark of the covenant, uh, uh, there was supposed to be a messy seat. And the messy seat uh, was supposed to be flanked on the two sides uh, by the cherubims, uh, in otherwise known as the angel. Uh, so the throne of grace, uh, as it were, throne of mercy, as it were, was in the most holy place. Uh, but you and I know uh, that the veil uh, of the secret place has been torn into two. Uh, and so we have access. The Bible says, come boldly. Now listen, people of God. I'm still talking about the secret place. Uh, as much as the veil has been torn into two, uh, uh, the Lord looks at those, uh, you and I, uh, and says, I know the veil has been torn. Uh, but guess what? The secret place will not meet you where you are. You have to leave where you are. Uh, 
and come into the secret place. Whereas it looks very easy, we get excited. He says we should come. I'm afraid to say it that there are some of us, even though the veil has been torn, we have not yet made movement. We have not yet pressed into God. He's Shantole. We have not yet labored in the spirit. We have not yet gone in. I think there's a vacancy in heaven right now. God is looking for men and women of the secret place. The earth is under a siege. It's only men and women of the secret place that he can equip with fire. For as long as we do church as usual, for as long as we sound ordinary, we will not be threats to the kingdom of darkness. For as long as we show up with our fire in our eyes, he came to lay shadah. For as long as we show up without being fed from the table where the angels dine, for as long as we show up without having an interface in the secret place, under the old covenant, God catches up Moses into the place of glory. And guess what? When Moses was done with God, when Moses was done with an interface into the secret place with God, as he came out, the Bible says, the children of Israel could not look at Moses' face. They said, no, no, your face is shining with brightness. And guess what? Moses had to tone down the glory. How to tone down the glory? Guess what? Moses did not come out and start telling the people, can't you see my face is shining? Can't you see my face is shining? Somebody could have looked at him and said, I see nothing. When a man has been to the secret place, he doesn't tell his generation, I went somewhere. Uh, can I say one more time? Uh, when a man, Kilato, she, Anabaha, interfaces with God in the secret place, uh, he doesn't explain to his generation, do you know I'm a man of the secret place? Uh, if you have to tell me you've been with God, you've been nowhere. If you have to tell me that you are a prayer man, uh, you pray nothing. Uh, you know the amount, Kilara, Shandele, uh, the kind of glory that was on Mary, because she had been incubated when the bible says angel was saying and the angel said the power of the most high will overshadow you so Mary was an overshadowed woman because she was in the place of an encounter Lord our desire if we have to turn the hands of the plague backwards if we have to break the backbone of the Leviathan if we have to crush the old serpent if we have to show the dragon a way out of our world raise more men and women of the secret place place. Mary walks into Elizabeth's house. Pay attention that all that Mary did was to say auntie, good morning. All that Mary did was just to greet Elizabeth. All of a sudden, just ordinary greeting. The Bible said Elizabeth was full of the Holy Ghost. Small cousin. Just because she had been somewhere came out uh, and greeted Ali uh, her auntie as it were her auntie became full of the Holy Spirit not just that the baby inside Elizabeth began to leap because an ordinary girl small virgin girl greeted her but the difference is that this is a small virgin girl who has been to the secret place what happens if we have 50 persons from streams of joy Houston who can be who can interface with God in a depth that is not common who can move in a dimension with God in a koinonia where they lose the flesh lose themselves 
themselves uh, in the place of prayer where they are not timing themselves uh, where they lose a sense of timing uh, just to be with God uh, you know the place of prayer when you break down uh, when nothing is the problem uh, you know the place of worship uh, when you are crying uh, not because of a burden is uh, but the picture of God uh, looms so large uh, in front of you uh, and all you want to do uh, is just to pour out uh, men and women of the secret place there's a vacancy in heaven and God is saying I need men and women of the secret place hear this it's important you get this right let me tell you what is happening right now the veil in the temple has been torn into two it's been torn into two so right now remember i said from the old covenant you have the outer court you have the inner court and you have the most holy place and guess what if the veil has been torn into two which means men that are in the outer court can actually see what is happening in the secret place can i say one more time men christians brethren brothers and sisters pastors with title can actually be in the outer court and they can see what is happening in the secret place guess what people of god they can see the glory of the secret place but they will never experience it <laughs> they see the power of the secret place you guess what Reba, we don't judge them by their oratory we don't judge them by their exegesis we don't judge them by their description because the truth of the matter is that they have the opportunity to see but they never experience it God curse the day that all we live for is to just speak about his glory but never experiencing it God forbid that all we speak about is to call him Jehovah healer we call him Rafa you can heal our land but coronavirus is shutting us down you know what this is not the battle of one man God is using this season to drag more men into the secret place he's dragging husband get into the secret place he's dragging wife get into the secret place I'm afraid to say this if we do not rise we will have no gospel to get to teach our children we have no gospel we have no good news to tell them because one day you see your son in the house you see your daughter in the house is gonna ask you a question if you say God is a healer if you say God is a is all-powerful why wasn't he able to shut down coronavirus what will you tell your child they will lose faith in God but you and I know that the scripture says that all power has been given unto us God will not do what he has given you power to do because we are the only ones mandated to walk upon the earth because we we are flesh this is the reason why even God even though God would have saved man being a spirit but he understood in this realm he has no right to operate that is why God himself wore flesh in order to save man and this is why God is still watching us and say you know what I gave you the power because in this realm you've got the identity to make things work you are not wearing flesh to show off you are not wearing flesh to let someone know I'm fair, I'm dark, I'm beautiful. I look all dapper. No, sir, that is not why you have your flesh on you. You have your flesh on you to know I'm here on assignment. The day my flesh goes is the day my assignment finishes on planet Earth. Man of the secret place. Remember, Psalms 91 says, He that dwells. Permit me to put it this way. Not he that visits. Heaven is not asking for visitors. There are most of us. All we do. You know you have your moments. You have your moments. Moments where you feel like I've been too far from God. I need to get back. I need to get back. And that night. And that morning. That afternoon. That evening. You spend some time in repentance. And it looks like your spirit man is renewed. Two days. Three days down the line we keep asking what exactly happened to you you can't find your
your consecration anymore. You can't find your love for God anymore. You can't find your zeal for God anymore. I'm afraid to say to you, brother, visit her to the holy place. Sister, visit her to the secret place. You only visited. He didn't say, he that visits the secret place. He says, he that dwells. He that finds comfort in the presence of God. He that finds he that finds a place where you can say, Lord I love to be here with you. Though you say nothing, I just want to know that I'm in a place of security. Whether my head is on the pillow right in my room and I'm all by myself and those tears are coming down from my eyes they're not coming because I am burdened but they are coming from a place of saying I love you Lord you are seeking for men and women of the secret place men and women who are saying Lord break me Lord use me Lord could it be possible that it is your prayer that God is waiting on to turn the tide of things could it be possible that it is your intercession that God is waiting on uh, to turn the tide of things. Uh, when Jesus entered the secret place, uh, according to the book of Hebrews, uh, he went uh, to offer himself as a sacrifice uh, once and for all. Uh, so every man uh, who is moving into the secret place uh, must understand uh, there's a generation that is tied to you. Remember, Hebrews says to us, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. Grace to help in time of need. We are in time of need, people of God. The world is in time of need. But you know what? He says you have to make a journey to the throne of grace. Yes, sir. You have to be in the secret place. When you talk, I hear you. In the secret place. Uh, you are at the center of my will. Uh, some people have prayed to the point. Uh, you don't even know what to pray about again. But God is saying. Uh, it is only in the secret place. Uh, that I put you at the center of my will. Uh, because in the secret place. Uh, every need. Uh, you pray. God speaks about Moses. Moses. That God spoke with Moses as a man spoke with his friend. Does it blow your mind? This is only what happens in the secret place. Men sit with God and they commune with God like men are gisting with their friends. Oh, Shikila. You know, with your friend, you can afford to be with yourself. When you are gisting with your friend, you can afford to tell some stories uh, that you can't tell outside people. The Bible says uh, that God gisted with Moses. Moses was a man of the secret place. Uh, God gisted with Moses as a man gisted with his friend. Ayateka. All men of the secret place are wanted. Men, God can sit down and say let me gist you about COVID-19. Men who can look God into the eye uh, and say to God, uh, what manner of prayer should we be making in this season and God will sit you down uh, like he said to Abraham shall I do this thing uh, without telling Abraham uh, God is bound uh, by a covenant uh, of the secret place uh, to say to you uh, shall I do this particular thing uh, without revealing it uh, unto Jerry unto Joanna unto Ashley Akila uh, shall I do this thing uh, without speaking to Bartholomew about this uh, shall I do this thing uh, without telling Raymond uh, about what I'm about to do uh, and God is saying uh, only when you become a man of the secret place uh, prayer becomes a lifestyle uh, when men gist with God can I say it one more time uh, 
prayer becomes a lifestyle when men exist with God. But for as long as men are still trying to pray to God, you know, pray to God. You wonder why didn't I last 10 minutes in prayer? Why do I run out of breath in 30 minutes? What happened to me after just 25 minutes of prayer? You are trying to pray, but when you get lost in deep koinonia, there are no words to explain koinonia. It's just deep. There are no words to explain it's just a place Helen is a place where flesh does not commune. All the speaks is a spirit speaking with another spirit. What happens in the place of Koinonia is where he God pours out himself. What happens in the place of Koinonia is where he steers a power. There is a level of power. The ones that some of us are carrying is not enough to show shut down the evil that we're experiencing around us and God is saying come up here this is the same thing he says to John the revelator in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and he speaks to John and says come up here I've got some things to show you and I feel that God is saying I want to make you a woman of the secret place that will not run out of steam when I need you, Isha Libara, I didn't raise you for you alone. I didn't raise you for yourself alone. You are still wondering why are the arrows flying by day? I can't find a man at the secret place. That's what God is saying. Why are a thousand falling by my side and ten thousand at the other side? And God says, I've not found a man at the secret place. But you would say, God, but I've been there before. And God is saying, You only visited. You only showed up. You showed up for two days. You showed up for three days. But I'm not looking for men who just show up. I'm looking for dwellers. I'm looking for those that will call the secret place their home. I'm looking for those that say, no matter what happens, I'm not leaving here. I was born for such a time as this. I'm looking for those who are saying, Lord, my generation needs me. I've not been called to live for myself. But I am being steered in this season. It's interesting how we run into the promises of Psalm 91 with our first of all sitting down and asking ourselves, am I a man of the secret place? Am I a woman of the secret place? Lord, where am I in your scheme of things? I love love the expression used to describe this place. The Bible calls it a secret place. I love the expression used to describe this place. It was called the secret place. People, it was not called the public courtyard. It was called the secret place. No man keeps anything valuable in the open. No man keeps a treasure in the open. No man keeps something worthwhile in the open. Right there in the secret place. The secrets of tomorrow is kept. Right there in the secret place. Who you can become and what you need to become it is in the secret place. Right there in the secret place. The answers you've been looking for are deposited in the secret place. But the devil keeps fighting your ability to stay. The devil keeps trying to shut down your ability to stay the devil keeps fighting he knows how much and who we can become when we become dwellers and not visitors and I believe that today God is saying I want to raise me a people 
who was saying, Lord, I don't want to visit on Monday. And you won't find me on Tuesday. You won't find me on Wednesday. You won't find me on Thursday. You won't find me on Friday. Notice, people of God. The Psalms 91 did not come in a plural form. Psalms 91 did not come in a plural form. Psalms 91 say he, Arabo Shira, it came in a singular form. And so Ribalaba Shandelia, you see the secret place in Dalabasaha. We don't wait for others to join us. In the Leboshihara, we don't wait for others. Are you moving with me? Sister A, are you moving with me? Let us go to the secret place. A songwriter says, even if no one joins me, I will follow. A songwriter says, even if no one queues up with me, I will follow. There are times I may have to walk this path alone. There are times when I have to be the one. Pray in this prayers alone. There are times when I have to be the one. There are times when I have to be the one. It is not a competition. It is not an all commas affair. There are times when I don't have to explain what is happening in the depths of my being alone. There are times when they don't have to understand the burden that you feel in your spirit. Don't wait for your friends. They will continue to keep you at the outer court. Don't wait for your husband if he doesn't wake up to pray I will not pray if he doesn't do this I will not do this if my family don't study the word I won't study the word remember Psalm 91 did not say they that dwell he says he it's about time for you to say I thank you so much that you are my friend. I bless God that God brought you my way. But you know what? The word says he. The word says she. You don't have to understand my steering. You don't have to understand my unction. But the word says he that dwells in the And the book of Hebrews tells us for you have come to Mount Zion the city of the living God an attempt by the book of Hebrews to describe what the secret place could be he says you've come to Mount Zion the city of the living God the company of innumerable angels the spirit of just men made perfect the church of the firstborn to the sprinkling of the blood in the lekoroshibala asi lekerebasa it's a mount zion experience oreketele barabasa ajandele barabasa did you hear what i said it is not a valley experience he says you've come to mount zion erekedele boshiha the moment a man begins to leave irikara in the depth of koinonia in a deep consecration in a place where flesh dies in a place where the altar is on fire the first thing that happens is that you are put on a mount it's called the Mount Zion it's the city of the living God at your disposal it is called innumerable it's called innumerable company of angels the Bible did not say innumerable angels alone but the Bible calls that innumerable company of angels. In other words, the man begins to interface as friends, heavenly beings. He begins to dwell in a company of angels. So right there, he gets into the place of prayer. People, it's as easy and as graphic as I'm showing you right now. He gets into the place of prayer and angels recognize him. He is the man of the secret place. And when he begins to go, like 
Kakusha. The angels that are members of his company. If you know what I mean by this. Angels that know him. Begin to come to the sound of his prayer. They begin to sit around. When it is time to eat the food of the spirit. The angels are well positioned to serve him the food of the spirit. You know that kind of food that the prophet ate. And the Bible said he went in the strength of that food for 40 days. I'm talking about warfare angels. How can that man have an obstacle in front of him when there are angels of warfare? How can that man have an issue? And the spirit of just men made perfect to the church of the firstborn. Which means when you get into the secret place, you will understand that you are not a second born. No situation will make you know that you are a second born. You will all know that I am the firstborn. To the sprinkling of the blood. This is where the blood says no. You will not be a victim. This is where the blood says no. I will help your family. This is where the blood says no. I will stand for you. And today I see God call men and women to the place of the secret place. Would you lift up your two hands wherever you are watching me from, from your house, from your bed, from your sitting room, speaking the Holy Ghost, steer your spirit man, say God take me to the secret place, keep me there. I don't want to be in the courtyard observing what is happening in the secret place. Steer my heart to the secret place. If you could offer your place, offer yourself in order to remain at the secret place. Kill the flesh. Lord We bless you, Lord. This is the time. This is the season. We sense an urgency in the spirit. Lord, there is a vacancy for men of the secret place. Men who are growing in the place of the depth of koinonia men who are saying we are pressing on men who are saying there is a higher dimension men who are saying there is a higher place I pray for you right now let the Lord steer you to the place of a depth whatsoever that stopped you at the courtyard whatsoever that stopped you on the outside I command it to break let your prayer fire bounce back let your consecration fire bounce back let your ability to release oracles of grace let it come again I see an army rising I see an army rising much more than the army that was caught down in Ezekiel 37 you are rising with power you are rising with grace no more revisitor no more revisitor to the secret place no more revisitor to the secret place you are dwelling you are consistent the garment of yesterday is over the ashes on your altar are over limitations placed upon your destiny I announce they are over pressing one will chase a thousand and two will chase tens of thousands take back your power take back your spirit of warfare take back your consecration our father we bless you Jesus we honor you we rise as men of the secret place as we abide as we dwell in the secret place we will abide under the shadow of the almighty and we shall watch the blessings of Psalm 91 become our portion father we thank you be magnified oh God in Jesus name we have prayed. Amen.